Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated Israel's position on the international nuclear agreement with Iran, declaring it a bad deal that either must be fixed or cancelled. The Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yuki Amano, declares that Iran was abiding by the rules set out in the nuclear agreement, rejecting Washington's claims that the Islamic Republic was not adhering to the deal. The Islamist Palestinian Hamas organization, which controls the Gaza Strip, declared it is ready to talk reconciliation with the rival government of President Mahmoud Abbas without preconditions. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned in a joint press conference with Argentinian President Mauricio Macri that the Islamic Republic of Iran, together with its proxy Hezbollah, has a terror machine that operates across the globe, including in Latin America, while declaring that the need to fight terrorism must be a united effort by the international community. They have a terror machine that encompasses the entire world with their sidekick Hezbollah, they're operating uh, terrorist cells through many continents, including in Latin America. Uh, and the need to fight terrorism, whether from Iran or from Daesh, has now become a concern for all countries. We understand that this terrorism attacks everyone in Barcelona, in Berlin, uh, in Manchester, in London, in Paris, uh, in every country around the world, terrorism strikes. And just as the uh, Attacks are indivisible. The response should be indivisible. With regard to the nuclear agreement Iran reached with world powers, which included Russia, China, France, Britain, Germany, and the United States under the Obama administration, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu reiterated Israel's position in which he declared the 2015 agreement as a bad deal that either must be fixed or cancelled. In the case of Iran, it is not merely terror, it's also the quest for nuclear weapons that concerns us and should concern the entire um, international community. We understand the dangers of a rogue nation having atomic bombs. In the case of Iran, there have been some news uh, stories about Israel's purported position on the nuclear deal with Iran. So let me take this opportunity and clarify. Uh, our position is straightforward. This is a bad deal. Either fix it or cancel it. This is Israel's position. Meanwhile, in Washington, Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer, said last night that Israel hoped that within a few weeks there would be a dramatic change in the position of the United States with regard to the nuclear agreement with Iran, which would entail introducing changes to the agreement or its cancellation. The comments by Ambassador Dermer at an event marking the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, comes just one month before President Trump will reveal Iran's compliance with the nuclear agreement under a U.S. law that forces the President of the United States to inform Congress on the matter every 90 days and whether it is in the best interest of the national security of the United States. While President Trump declared the agreement on many occasions as the worst deal ever negotiated, the American leader has faced two of the 90-day deadlines so far and both times avoided scrapping the agreement, stating that Iran was meeting the conditions needed to keep in joint sanctions relief. But more recently, President Trump said he does not accept to certify Iran's compliance again as Tehran's ballistic missile program has pointed to a breach of the international agreement. Washington declared on several occasions that Tehran's testing of ballistic missile violated the spirit of the 2015 nuclear agreement, with officials citing paragraph 3 of Annex B of UN Security Council Resolution 2231, which calls upon Iran not to undertake any activity related to ballistic missiles designed to be capable of delivering nuclear weapons, including launches using such ballistic missile technology for eight years after the adoption date of the nuclear agreement. 
Since the adoption of the nuclear agreement, however, Iran has conducted several ballistic missile tests which are capable of carrying a nuclear payload. It is important to note that Iran rejects any claims of violating the nuclear agreement, considering the wording of the text which Tehran interprets as an advisory rather than a conclusive demand. In related news, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Yukiya Mano, declared that Iran was abiding by the rules set out in the nuclear agreement, rejecting Washington's claims that the Islamic Republic was not adhering to the deal. Amano further stressed that the UN's nuclear watchdog will continue to implement inspections to Iranian sites that the Islamic Republic provides complementary access to in accordance with the implementation of additional protocol as is done in other countries of inspection. Nuclear commitments undertaken by Iran uh, under the JCPOA are being implemented. We will continue to implement the additional pro protocol in Iran including carrying out complementary accesses to sites and other locations, as we do in other countries with additional protocols. When asked regarding Iran's ongoing rejection of any inspections on its military sites and essentially how many sites Iran was willing to provide the nuclear watchdog with access to, the Director General of the International Atomic Energy Agency stressed that Iran's provision of complementary access was classified, yet Amano was willing to assert that Tehran's compliance was more frequent than in other countries with extensive nuclear programs. I cannot um, tell you how many um, uh, complementary access um, uh, we have had, uh, but um, uh, I can tell you uh, that um, we have had many complementary access and, um, uh, and that um, uh, 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 we, have visit, we have had access uh, to locations more frequently uh, than many other uh, countries uh, with extensive nuclear programs. For many Iranians, including those who support the nuclear deal, keeping inspectors out of military sites is a point of national pride with officials stressing that any country's defense system should be off-limits to international inspections. Iran has consistently argued that inspections of military sites would violate national sovereignty, although the 2015 deal it signed with world powers allows inspectors to gain limited access to any site where illicit nuclear activity is suspected. Now, in other news, the Islamist Hamas organization, which controls the Gaza Strip, declared in a statement that it was prepared to dissolve a committee it formed with the aim of replacing the administrative government of Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas in the Palestinian enclave. The statement, which was released following a meeting of a Hamas delegation with Egyptian officials in Cairo, coincided with a declaration by the political chief of Hamas, Ismail Haniya who said that the Islamist organization was ready to talk reconciliation with the rival government of President Abbas without preconditions. Hamas had previously demanded that Abbas hold a series of measures taken against the Islamist militant group before sitting down to discuss a reconciliation deal after the Western-backed leader of the Palestinian Authority cut electricity in Gaza and slashed the salaries of tens of thousands of public servants in a bid to compel Hamas to dissolve its contentious committee. It is important to know that since the rival Palestinian faction split in 2007, following a violent takeover of the Islamist Hamas in the Gaza Strip, repeated attempts at reconciliation have miserably failed. Thank you for joining us. Keep praying for the peace of Israel and the peace of Jerusalem. I'm Yair Pinto. Have a good evening, and we'll see you again tomorrow at the same time. In order to donate to TV7 Israel News, please follow these simple steps. 
first press the Donate logo, located at the bottom left side of TV7 Israel News Facebook page, or on the Donate tab at the head of the page. Then insert the amount you'd like to donate, and fill in your credit card information. Just like this. And press Review Donation and Continue. After reviewing your donation details, please press Donate to finalize your donation. That's it! Your donation is now complete, and an email with your donation details has been sent to your email address. You can also print your donation receipt by pressing the link here. Thank you for supporting TV7 Israel News.